Majoris, Majoris, the red super giant is the focus of this chorus. V.Y. Canis Majoris, it shines so bright, how could we possibly ignore it? V.Y. Canis Majoris is one of the largest known stars in the Milky Way galaxy. 4,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Canis Major, there's a supergiant star shining very brightly because of its amazing luminosity. Nearly half a million times brighter than our sun, first discovered way back in 1801 by a French astronomer, Jérôme Lalande. You can see he was a serious looking man. If VY were in the center of our solar system, it would take up all the space from Mercury to Saturn. V.Y. Canis Majoris, the red supergiant is the focus of this chorus. V.Y. Canis Majoris, it shines so bright, how could we possibly ignore it? Why do they call it V.Y.? It's a variable star pulsating from dim to bright. It's high oxygen levels give it red light. So a red hypergiant is the way it's classified. Compared to the sun, how big is VY? Multiply the sun size 1500 times. VY makes the sun look super small. Like comparing a BB to a basketball. There's no telling how long VY will last. It's already ejected over half its mass. Scientists predict it will explode one day and turn into a black hole when it goes away. VY, VY. Majoris, the red supergiant is the focus of this chorus. V.Y. Canis Majoris, it shines so bright, how can we possibly ignore it? Skewtai is the largest known star in the Milky Way, with a diameter over 1,700 times greater than the Sun. Near the center of the Milky Way, with the Eagle Nebula nearby. 9,500 light years away, it's the star we call you Skewtai. It's the brightest looking star we've discovered so far, 1860 was the year it was found. Its location is the Scutum constellation, and it seems to be the biggest around. UI Scutai used to be called BD-125055, but we're glad they changed it, because that wouldn't be any fun to sing. UI Scutai UI Scutai German astronomers discovered it first from the Bonn Observatory. They found it in the zone of avoidance where the stardust makes it really cloudy. Five million times the volume of our sun, and it's near Sagittarius A. UI is a red hypergiant, super big and super far away. UI, super When it's not spelled right, people knew about the star even in ancient times. Guys like Ptolemy and others who were studying astronomy. The Sir John Herschel was the first one on the list to describe his brightness cycles in 1836. And it's in the constellation called Orion. It's been hard for scientists to measure it, but they keep trying. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The red supergiant. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. In the constellation Orion. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Both brighter and bigger than the sun. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, 
Beetlejuice, just saying the name is fun. Beetlejuice is about 600 light years away. Some people think it's closer depending on its brightness that day. That's always the problem with the variable star. It's a bit of a challenge to tell how far off they are. For those who want to know Beetlejuice facts and figures, we'll start by saying that it's 1400 times bigger than the sun, and it has 20 times more mass and belongs to the spectral class M2 lab. Scientists believe it's in its final stages, and once it explodes, a supernova is created. But that won't happen until it's probably much older. When it does, Orion's gonna need a new shoulder. Yeah, Orion's gonna need a new shoulder! Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The red supergiant. Sirius, the dog star, and because it marked the beginning of their warmest season, 
is where the phrase dog days of summer comes from. Sirius is almost twice as big as the sun, and it has elements galore like iron, hydrogen, and Cygnus is its permanent place. It's one of the most luminous in the Milky Way, and it loses lots of mass every day. NML Cygni is a little over 1600 solar radii. NML Cygni is nearly as big as the hypergiant UI skewed time. When people say NML, what they're really saying are the three names Neugebauer, Marx, and Leighton. Keep in mind it was those three guys who discovered NML Cygni in 1965. That's right! If you replace the sun with this star, it's gigantic enough to extend super far all the way out to Jupiter and possibly Saturn. Either way, the Earth would be consumed, so it wouldn't matter. It's a red hypergiant hanging out in space. The constellation Cygnus is its permanent place. It's one of the most luminous in the Milky Way, and it loses lots of mass every day. NML Cygni is a red hypergiant they discovered in 1965. Cygni is a really big star, too far to be seen with the human eye. Some people call it North Star, some people call it Pole Star. It's Polaris, the super giant. And there's a minor is the star that's brightest Some people call it North Star Some people call it Pole Star P-O-L-A-R-I-S Is that how you spell Polaris? Yes! Polaris is super bright, about 2500 times brighter than the sun Polaris is the brightest star in Ursa Minor, a yellow-white supergiant, and you can find it on the tip of the handle of the Little Dipper. And Polaris is a friend to the skippers and the sailors, cause it helps them with their navigation, they can tell their latitude by Polaris's location. And if you're wondering just how they do it, remember, the north axis of the Earth points to it. Polaris is known by many names, including Lodestar, the Steering Star, and Gate of Heaven. Some people call it North Star. Some people call it Pole Star. It's Polaris, the super giant. And there's a minor is the star that's brightest. Some people call it North Star. Some people call it Pole Star. P O L A R I S. Is that how you spell Polaris? Yes! Polaris 
this is a triple star system, a three star cluster, maybe even a fourth or fifth one. All of the stars in the Polaris family orbit each other because they share the same gravity. If you could travel to Polaris at the speed of light, it would still take over 300 years to get there. Polaris. North Star. Polaris. Pole Star. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah.